we're getting this year all come from right out of Danbury, New Hampshire. Local, we pay $50 a ton, um, contract price for the year. It's the equivalent to about 82, 83 cents a gallon of oil. Um, three years ago, when oil shot to four, four and a quarter, whatever, um, our equivalent price, we were paying $59, which is about a dollar a gallon. And so, even with the volatility of the commodity market, um, the chips have remained pretty constant. Um, any increase is due mostly to diesel charges by the suppliers. Do you know what the cost of the total project was? This, we had an electrically heated high school as you've heard. Yeah. So the additional to put the biomass in versus the conventional oil or gas was about six hundred thousand dollars to build to build it. The additional any additional expense. If we attach a boiler room over there, yeah. it costs us an additional six hundred thousand to build this building and put the biomass in. We have the backup boilers on the middle school. The boilers we are existing. Yeah. We added sections to one of them to build it up a little mm -hmm. bit. So having said that, we have the perfect scenario. Yeah. You know, because yeah, and having said that, six hundred thousand, fifty-five percent, we get state aid for construction. Mm -hmm. So we're talking three hundred thousand. And we've already paid that. This is year five. So payback for us is for done us is done and so you were paid back within five years yes and oil. and you know the volatility of the oil determines the payback we were slated the engineers and architects told us we'd burn 12 to 1500 tons mm -hmm. we've got it down to 540 last year 550 so we've delayed. taken it right there so we have quite a bit of excess capacity here having said that um, but it's from aggressively managing controls. Um, we have a building that you'll hear when tour the other three and a half inches of spray foam on the outside of that wall over there. Um, in the middle of the winter I can go all weekend on this building and lose a couple of degrees. You know, I'll have a corner classroom that's 70 degrees at 3 o'clock on Friday and Monday morning go to fire up and it's 67, 68 with the wind blowing at zero degrees. Question on the, on the shoulder seat. Yep. Um, I can run this basically the first of November. I shoot for April vacation, the last week of April, because when you get to the May and the June, or especially May, you want to pop the heat on for a couple hours in the morning and shut the pump, shut everything else down. Once you fire this up, you really don't want to be shutting it off, turning it on. It's just a pain. Use the oil. Use the oil. Just the, and in just fact, this year I didn't. We have a 15,000 gallon tank over there. And something I never really processed or realized that uh, it's a biodegradable product in the ground. You know, it's an organic compound mm -hmm. that deteriorates mm -hmm. and spoils. So this year we decided to use some of that oil. So I didn't fire this till the beginning of December to lose some of that oil. Sure. But you know, having said that, I haven't talked it out. I don't know what I'm going to do. The bottom of this is an auger. The auger pulls the chips into a conveyor belt on the back there. Um, any questions, just feel free to ask. Don't worry. Um, it goes into a conveyor belt on the back side, and we'll go in and see it. Um, but the auger is free floating, and it eats its way down. This end here will stick up in the air. And when it's all the way down, like it is right now, is when it will move. And I, I've always been surprised that these chips just stay straight up and down. It doesn't collapse like a sand, you know. <laughs> but who knows? The chips are bowl chips, B-O-L-E. It's the whole tree with the bark on it, but not the branches and the leaves. So I like, we get these bowl chips and also mill chips. The mill chips look exactly the same except they come out of the mills when they cut the slab to square it to mill it but there's no bark um, the only difference the the experts say that the BTU value of the bowl and the mill are exactly the same you know I'm an accountant I don't buy it yeah. <laughs> but the bark can't have the same BTU as hardwood maybe by 
Weight, but not by volume. Yeah. That's the only thing I've got figured out. Uh, so does it, I do does know. it make a difference if it's an oak tree or a pine tree? Uh, we only use hardwood. Only hardwood. Only hardwood. Okay. That's what was set up to burn, and that's okay. it. Gotcha. Um, we do have a gentleman that's a local logger and a school board, and he every once in a while comes in with a load of pine and spruce uh, we somehow let him get rid of and <laughs> mix in a little bit I guess it doesn't hurt but sure. with theoretically we burn hardwood the biggest difference between the mill chips and the bowl chips is a regular garbage pail and you'll see it when you get down regular garbage pail one tractor trailer which is half of this whole thing um, is about 30 tons to 35 tons of fit. I'll have one to one and a half garbage pails of ash with the mill chips. With the bowl chips, it'll be five or six garbage pails, which is still nothing. So the ash goes right on the athletic fields, pound for pound, equivalent to lime. I spend $16,000 a year liming fields. I don't create enough ash to get anywhere near what I need. You know, so there's nothing that comes out of this plant. And there's no byproducts or anything else. Anything going into the atmosphere is steam. The, the wood is green, not like home, so it's wet. It's 35 to 45 percent moisture content. So we basically have to dry that wood before we can burn it. So it's just steam coming out. Um, Department of Environmental Services, uh, when we first opened this plant, this is the first school district in New Hampshire, Hanover High School had a plant they're part of a Vermont SAU. We're the first school district in New Hampshire to actually have one of these. Now I think they're uh, 11 in the state. Vermont has 35, 40 of them operating and been operating for years. Um, the only difference between this power plant and a boiler room or a gas room is this is the fuel tank here. The only difference and we're just creating heat and you'll be amazed you if you've been in a, any commercial boiler room you smell the oil you smell of this you'll be amazed coming in here how clean it is how no smell you don't even smell the wood when you get a delivery sometimes you'll smell a little bit it smells great but for the most part there's no smell um, let's go in and 